now we're talking about Thesis 14. An observation that came to me, Michael, in 14 would be that if aging was real, every living organism would be subject to the same constraints. Um, could you, and we're not, as you point yeah. out here. And I wonder if you could talk about that and the implications of that. So, the whole flat Earth concept that we live on this flat plane, or maybe even slightly curved plane, about which uh, celestial objects uh, orbit, revolve, um, was devastatingly refuted by the Apollo mission, planting a camera on Earth and looking back at Earth, taking pictures of this beautiful blue orb in the moon's sky. In the same way, the really erroneous assumptions with respect to both theory and fact of molecular and cellular theories of aging are dramatically revealed by the existence of organisms that do not age at all. Mm -hmm. So if you believe that aging is this ineluctable physiological process, which just proceeds without remit because of some basic deficiencies in our cell biology, you perforce are required to assert that all animals must age. Well, as a matter of fact, that's not true. So if you're going to be a scientist, which many cell biologists are not, but if you are going to be a scientist, you're going to accept Popper's dictum that you cannot simultaneously accept a theory and an observation which directly refutes that theory. The cell biologists are going to have to give up on their theory once they admit the fact that simple animals like Hydra, which have the same basic cell types as we do, they do not undergo aging at all. And this has been very well demonstrated in the laboratory by Danielle Martinez. You can culture hydra in a laboratory, let them divide and divide and divide and grow and grow and grow, and they just go on living and living and living, totally unlike a seemingly much more robust uh, and complicated organism like the fruit flies that I work with that show no such pattern whatsoever. Uh, does the hydra um, uh, cell divide? Because uh, uh, you know the, the fruit fly doesn't. So you know, I just wondered whether cell division was um, w w was an issue here. Well, Did hydra we have production? lots of cell division. Hydra have lots of cell division, and so do humans. So humans palpably age. Hydra do not. Uh, it's not. It's really not a question of whether or not cells divide. Okay. Okay. I was thinking more in terms of a reproductive process. Ah, well, reproductive process changes the forces of natural selection. That's the whole point. Ah. So in evolutionary theory, we have a beautiful theory that explains exactly why organisms like hydra do not age. Because in organisms like hydra, which reproduce by symmetrical fission, or relatively symmetrical fission, uh, natural selection will favor the achievement of biological immortality for those organisms. Okay. So that's what they have. Natural selection is the key to the entire story. It has nothing to do with specifics of biochemistry or cell biology. There is no aging physiological process at any cell or biochemical level except for those physiological processes engendered by evolution by natural selection in those specific organisms right. in which evolution by natural selection permits aging to occur. So, if your and my aging isn't um, biologically uh, um, inevitable from a design point of view, not, not, not that I won't deteriorate, but, but from a design point of view, what are the implications of that on human health? In theory, and at this point only in theory, the idea would be that given that aging is simply due to a lack of the appropriate information to keep us alive indefinitely, which natural selection can readily supply, the more we can figure out for ourselves, separate from evolution, what the lacking information is mm -hmm. and use that information that we ourselves discover as to how to keep a mammal alive indefinitely, we can move toward indefinite lifespans.